Good morning, church school friends. This is the church school lesson for Sunday, the 16th of May. I'm going to start by lighting our candles, and I hope that you too are setting a sacred space, a holy space, a special space for God so you can worship this morning. Have our candles lit mm, and it helps us know what's coming next here we are getting ready to worship so let's close our eyes and do a few deep breaths to focus in Dear God, give us the eyes to see, give us the ears to hear, give us the heart to feel, give us the mind to understand, give us the will to act with the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Let me get ready for this lesson. Get a few things set up here. So our story today comes from the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So we have those four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the book of Acts is right after those four Gospels. And the book of Acts tells us about the acts of the disciples, their actions, what they did after Jesus rose from the dead and the actions of the early church, how the church was formed. So this comes from the book of Acts and it's the very first chapter, chapter one. And it starts in verse 15 through 17. So Peter stood up, and there was a crowd of about 120 people, the book of Acts said. And they were followers of Jesus. And Peter said, we knew, we knew from scripture that one of us, one of the 12 disciples would betray Jesus, would hand Jesus over to the authorities, to be crucified, to die on the cross. And it was Judas. And Judas is no longer among us. Judas has died and he's not one of the disciples any longer. There's only 11. And it's time, it's time that we replace him, Peter said to the crowd. And they wonder together, how would they go about choosing the 12th disciple? And they wondered together about that. And 
Peter said, well, it needs to be someone who's been with us from the beginning. Someone who was there when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Someone who was there along the road when Jesus was ministering to so many people. Someone who was there when Jesus died, died on the cross. It needs to be someone who was there when Jesus rose from the dead. It needs to be someone who was there when Jesus ascended to heaven. Jesus went to be with God. Well, two names came forward. The crowd had suggested, what about Joseph called Barsabbas or maybe Matthias? And the disciples asked themselves, okay, we have these two names. How are we going to decide between Barsabbas and Matthias? Well, they decided to pray. They decided to pray to make that decision, and so they did. Maybe they closed their eyes and bowed their heads. I'm not sure how they prayed. But they said, Lord, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one to choose. And then the scripture says they cast lots and the lot fell to Matthias. And so they chose Matthias as the 12th disciple. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as we think about that story today... I wonder if you've ever had to make a big decision. I bet you have. We all have to make decisions from time to time, and sometimes they're little, but sometimes they're kind of big. And I like the story today because it gives us an example of how to go about making a decision because we too, we can pray when we need to make a decision. We can pray. And we can ask just like the disciples did, we can say, oh Lord, show us what to do. Oh God, I have this big decision to make, help me make it. And you know, I do that. I do that all the time because I know that God can help me make good and wise decisions. And so I ask, help me God. And so after we ask in prayer, then, then we have to listen, right? We have to listen for that answer. And sometimes that's tricky. How do I listen for God's answer? Well, sometimes for me, it's just having some quiet presence and prayer with God, just asking and sitting quietly. 
sometimes I get out my journal and I start writing and writing in my journal and sometimes I hear in those words that are spilled out in my journal, I hear God's wisdom or some guidance there for me. Sometimes I might draw in my journal or, ooh, I love doing collage. Sometimes I can use that as a tool to listen. What might God be saying to me through this piece of creative art? And sometimes when I'm listening to God and I've opened myself up and I'm asked for direction and guidance. Sometimes I'm surprised by the words that come from a dear friend who really knows me and loves me. That can help me know God's guidance. Sometimes I'm surprised by the words that might come from a family member, a brother, a sister, a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa. Sometimes I might turn to the Bible and read stories from the Bible, or you might ask your parents, hmm, is there a story in the Bible that might relate to this decision I'm making that might help? Maybe it's a church school teacher, it's a priest, who you can turn to and ask, hmm, I have this decision and I'm listening for God's guidance. Do you have anything for me? And sometimes, just time, taking time, asking, listening, praying again, asking for God's help and guidance, and it will come. Let's say a prayer together, friends. Dear God, help us to remember to come to you when we have decisions to make. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to you and to your guidance for our lives. Thank you for loving us, for giving us Jesus so we can understand that love. Guide us and protect us. And now we pray as your Son, our Savior, has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Church school friends, you're in my heart. I'm missing you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I know I won't even recognize you. You're going to be so much bigger than when I last saw you. And here's the tip of the day. We are planning a giant last day of school party on June 9th. That is the last day of school. And I hope that you will come and join us in the courtyard. We've rented that mega, giant, huge, ultra mundo um, inflatable slide. There it is, that mega inflatable slide that you can crawl up and slide down. And if it's warm enough, we'll put a little water in the pool at the bottom so you could slide down into the pool. We'll play a lot of other games and just have fun being together, celebrating the last day of school with your church family. So tell your mom and dad about it now so that you can plan to join us the afternoon of the last day of school, June 9th. Have a great week, my friends, and ask for God to guide you 
when you need to make decisions this week. All right, I'm going to put our candles out. I'm going to just blow them out. They're getting kind of low, so here we go. There we go. Oh, have a lovely and grace-filled week. I love you. Bye-bye.